Breast Cancer Introduction Breast cancer refers to malignant neoplasms of the breast that can arise from ductal or lobular tissue. Ductal carcinomas account for 80% of cases and are more aggressive, whereas lobular carcinomas account for 5 to 15% and are less aggressive but more difficult to detect. Medullary carcinomas account for 5% and less common types include mucinous, inflammatory, and metaplastic. Remember that a breast mass in women over the age of 50 is carcinoma until proven otherwise. It occurs most often in the upper outer quadrant of the breast, which metastasizes to the axillary nodes. In decreasing frequency, metastasis is more frequent in the lungs, followed by bones, then the liver, brain, and ovaries. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in women in the United States and is responsible for the second highest number of cancer deaths. Axillary lymph node involvement is the most important prognostic factor in breast cancer. Risk factors. Genetic risk factors associated with breast cancer include family history, first degree relative, breast cancer gene 1 or breast cancer gene 2 mutations. Women who are breast cancer gene 1 carriers have a 55 to 65% risk of developing breast cancer by the age of 70 years, compared with 45% who are breast cancer gene 2 carriers. Additionally, patients who have the breast cancer gene 1 mutation are more likely to have estrogen receptor negative breast cancer, unlike most patients with breast cancer, including those who have the breast cancer gene 2 mutations. Women with breast cancer gene 1 or breast cancer gene 2 mutations tend to develop breast cancer at a much younger age than average. Ovarian, endometrial, or prior breast cancer, hints of possible inherited cancer syndromes such as breast cancer gene. Early menarche or late menopause, increased estrogen exposure. But overall, only about 5-10% to of breast cancer is inherited. Non-genetic risk factors associated with breast cancer include Lifestyle factors, for example, obesity, alcohol Toxic exposure, for example, diethylbestrol, Industrial chemicals or pesticides, radiation exposure Ionizing radiation, for example, frequent chest x-rays Nulliparity or late first pregnancy, 35 years of age or older Hormone replacement therapy due to exogenous estrogen. Protective factors include diets rich in grains and vegetables and low in saturated fats and calories. Aspirin use for longer than six months, which is considered mildly protective. Clinical presentation. The classic characteristics of a cancerous lesion include a hard, immovable, single dominant lesion with irregular borders. However, these features cannot reliably distinguish a benign from a malignant tumor. The signs of more advanced local regional disease include axillary adenopathy, suggesting local regional disease, or skin findings, such as erythema, thickening, or dimpling of the overlying skin, suggesting inflammatory breast cancer. The clinical presentation of breast cancer can vary as it advances, but it can be asymptomatic and undetected. A painless breast slump with possible nipple discharge. Breast discharge in the setting of malignancy is classically unilateral and bloody. A palpable solid and a mobile lump. Peau d'orange appearance. Peau d'orange appearance. Skin thickening that makes the breast look like an orange peel due to lymphatic obstruction, with or without nipple extraction. Axillary lymphadenopathy. Pathology. There are various histologic types of breast carcinoma that differ in microscopic appearance and biologic behavior. The most common histologic types of epithelial breast carcinoma are described below. Infiltrating ductal carcinoma. Infiltrating ductal carcinomas are the most common type of invasive breast cancer, accounting for 70 to 80% of invasive lesions. These lesions are characterized by cords and nests of cells with varying amounts of gland formation and cytologic features that range from bland to highly malignant. Infiltrating lobular carcinoma. Infiltrating lobular carcinomas comprise about 8% of invasive breast cancers. Microscopically, they're characterized by small cells that insidiously infiltrate the mammary stroma and adipose tissue individually and in a single file pattern. Mixed ductal, 
lobular carcinoma. A mixed histologic appearance comprising both ductal and lobular characteristics is defined as a mixed invasive carcinoma. These comprise 7% of invasive breast cancers. Other histologic types of breast cancer include metaplastic, mucinous, tubular, medullary, and papillary carcinomas. Together, they account for less than 5% of invasive cancers. Molecular subtypes. Based on gene expression profiles, the following molecular subtypes have been identified. Luminal subtypes. The luminal subtypes are characterized as luminal A and luminal B. They are the most common subtypes of breast cancer and make up the majority of estrogen, ER, positive breast cancers. The name luminal derives from a similarity in gene expression between these tumors and the luminal epithelium of the breast. They typically express cytokeratins 8 and 18. Human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 enriched. The human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 enriched subtype makes up about 10 to 15% of breast cancers and is characterized by high expression of human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 and proliferation gene clusters and low expression of the luminal and basal gene clusters. These tumors are often negative for estrogen and progesterone. Only half of clinical human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 positive breast cancers are human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 enriched on molecular profiling. The other half can include any molecular subtype, but is mostly made up of human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 positive luminal subtypes. Basal subtypes. Most of these tumors fall under the category of triple negative breast cancers because they are estrogen receptor progesterone receptor, and human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 negative. Intraductal papillomas. These are benign lesions of breast ductal tissue that may have malignant potential. The classic finding in intraductal papilloma is bloody nipple discharge, though it is worth remembering that the discharge may also be non-bloody. Other associated findings include breast pain and a palpable mass behind the areola. A biopsy should be performed in order to rule out breast cancer. In the case of intraductal papilloma, ductal lavage by microcatheter is the preferred way to test for abnormal intraductal cells because it's more accurate than examining nipple fluid aspirate. Treatment of intraductal papillomas is surgical removal. Diagnosis Imaging findings Classic mammographic findings of breast cancer include the presence of a soft tissue mass or density and grouped microcalcifications. Breast ultrasound is often used to distinguish a benign versus malignant lesion. Sonographic features of malignancy include hypoechogenicity, internal calcifications, shadowing, a lesion taller than it is wide, and spiculated, indistinct, or angular margins. Breast Cancer Receptor Testing Newly diagnosed breast cancer must be tested for estrogen and progesterone receptor expression and for overexpression of human epidermal growth factor 2 receptors. Estrogen and Progesterone Estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor are prognostic factors for invasive breast cancer, particularly in the first five years following initial diagnosis. In addition, Patients who are estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor positive are candidates for endocrine therapy as neoadjuvant or adjuvant treatment. Human Epidermal Growth Factor Receptor 2 Human Epidermal Growth Factor Receptor 2 overexpression is present in 20% of patients and predicts those who will benefit from Human Epidermal Growth Factor Receptor 2 directed therapy. Note Hormone Receptor Estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor positive cancers comprise a majority of cases, 80%. Staging of breast cancer. Breast cancer is classified according to the American Joint Committee on Cancer and the International Union for Cancer Control for Tumors, Nodes, and Metastases. The main stages are Stage 0 is a precancerous disease, specifically carcinoma in C2. Stages 1 to 3 indicate disease within the breast or regional lymph nodes. 
Stage 4 is a metastatic disease that has spread beyond the breast in regional lymph nodes. Typical testing for metastases includes measurement of liver transaminases and alkaline phosphatase for liver metastasis and a bone scan. A computed tomography scan of the abdomen or chest may be done if spread is suspected in those areas. Treatment Neoadjuvant therapy, such as chemotherapy, hormone therapy, and radiation therapy, should be used for local lesions that extend beyond the breast. If neoadjuvant therapy has reduced the tumor size, surgical resection and radiation therapy can be performed. Metastases can be treated with systemic therapy, but surgical resection and radiation can be used for solitary lesions. In inflammatory breast cancer, mastectomy, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy should all be utilized. Complications associated with untreated breast cancer include metastases to bone, thoracic cavity, brain, and liver. Complications of surgical treatment include lymphedema following no dissection, creating cosmetic disfigurement, impaired wound healing, decreased range of motion, and increased risk of infection. Wing scapula following injury to the long thoracic nerve. Image A shows pre-contrast three-dimensional fast-boiled gradient echo MRI with fat suppression. Image B shows post-contrast MRI delineates the extent of the invasive carcinoma as well as several clinically and mammographically occult satellite lesions. Here's an image of inflammatory breast cancer. It's important to rule out inflammatory breast cancer if a suspected breast infection does not respond to antibiotics. Breast MRI can be used to differentiate post-operative scarring from breast cancer recurrence. This series depicts a patient with a prior history of right lumpectomy for invasive carcinoma who presented for annual mammography. Image A. The mammogram shows a new irregular mass posterior to the lumpectomy bed in the posterior central right breast. Image B. Sagittal MRI images demonstrate a low signal mass in the posterior inferior right breast on the T2-weighted MRI and on the pre-gadolinium-enhanced T1-weighted image. Image C. Subtraction of the pre- and post-contrast sagittal T1-weighted images of the right breast shows an enhancing mass in the posterior central right breast, confirming suspicion of recurrence. Biopsy revealed recurrent invasive ductal carcinoma. Left breast ultrasound demonstrates a hypoechoic nodule with posterior acoustic shadowing that corresponds to the mammographic abnormality. Left breast MRI demonstrates a mass with lobulated margins and heterogeneous enhancement. There was a rapid wash-in of intravenous gadolinium with a rapid wash-out on the delayed phase. Suspicious enhancement curve. Image A, anterior projection, and image B, lateral projection. Lymphocentigraphy using technetium sulfur colloid demonstrates two foci of posterior and superior migration of the radiopharmaceutical into the axilla. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.